The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. To my right, from the Department of Religious Studies, it's Professor James Balfour Tubbs. <laughs> How are you today, Matt? How are you? I channeled Kathy there for just a quick <laughs> second. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> How's everything going, Jim? Good. Good. It's a gorgeous day. Absolutely Beautiful gorgeous. Day. Good you all homecoming day. can see the day. I cannot <laughs> see the day right now. <laughs> I'm facing away from the window. Behind so you <laughs> looks very good, Matt. <laughs> could be anything, frankly. It could be a thunderstorm. You could actually, you know, trick me if you wanted to. We'll just keep describing it to you. Yeah. It's, it's really it's nice behind <laughs> you. Oh, it's beautiful behind you, Matthew. <laughs> Sorry, we, you're missing it. We are coming to you live here, well, live, recorded live, um, from our homecoming event in the Fountain Lounge of the Student Union, which, of course, is where the administration is now in conjunction with many other things. And so uh, Jim and Heather apparently are going to keep me informed as to how the weather is mm -hmm. unrolling. <laughs> Sure. Uh, continuing around the table, we've got a number of guest panelists with us here today. Um, Professor Jeff Nardecchia, the Assistant Registrar, is joining us today. Thank you, Matt. I <laughs> appreciate the uh, offer to sit in. Absolutely. You send us questions every once in a while. It's been a while, so we got to pay you back, you know? <laughs> and payback's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> this luckily, is we've got a, uh, luckily, we've got a bleep button James there. Balfour. <laughs> Um, Jeff, how, how are the digs over in the new registrar's office, which, frankly, are just around the corner here? They're, you know, I told people as long as I don't get flooded out, they definitely a you know, marked improvement over what we had. Awesome. Uh, so. Almost anything would be, wouldn't it? It's a pretty low bar. That is... Uh, I think, after I after 20 that. years of sitting in front of our vault, yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm you much warmer and I'm much court. drier than I was in Fisher. Yes, you you were sort of like the guardian of the vault. Now that I think about that, yeah, absolutely. All the interesting things that are kept. But in But it was the only level that had restrooms, so that was a plus. You know, yeah, you're right. That I, and the as I think about office. that, yes. <laughs> Um, go and uh, check out the uh, Free Press article this weekend on the uh, deconstruction slash demolition of our old administration building. It's actually pretty interesting. Some good history uh, locked up in that. Uh, Professor Dan Maggio is here with us today. Hi, Matt. You're wearing your super cool engineering and science polo. I went out of my way to make sure I fit the role, <laughs> and um, I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but can you tell me, what's this vault? There's a vault? There was. There was a vault, yes. An actual, like a bank vault? Maybe a little bit of a overreach on that, but yeah, we, uh, we kept all of our records. I never knew that. Yeah. Important stuff. I know, I was going to say, Jeff, is that where the mace was? Was the mace in the Yes, vault? actually it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? What the a good guess. Oh. Yeah. And, and the, the vault that we have now, that's where it sits now. Oh, so, yeah. really? Okay. So there's another vault. Less impressive than the first, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, Dan, you learned something today. Yeah, I did. And I was in engineering yesterday. Everything looks really nice over there. So mm -hmm. everything, the campus is looking good. It's nice yeah. to get. Yeah, Usually is. I just go to liberal arts and record, but uh, it was nice to get around campus. Yeah. A lot of good memories. Check out your old digs, yes. right? Yep. Exactly. I said something in front of mixed company yesterday, or when, when you stopped by, I said, you know, Dan Maggio taught me Calc 3, and at least two or three of the people in the office are like, what are the words coming out of your mouth right <laughs> now, Matt? Like, huh? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Dan Maggio taught me Calc 3. Everybody knows that. Seriously. Seriously. Anyway, continuing around the table, we're joined by illustrious uh, psychology alum, uh, Tom Page. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Thank you very much. I'm not supposed to be here, actually. But, oh, well. Uh, you know. Yes, I came here to listen to the bands, and I wound <laughs> up at the, at the desk right here. Well, we're so. glad you're joining well, us. Th thanks I, I for did. sliding on in. Yeah. yeah. But, but I was started here shortly after that the Fisher uh, building uh, was, was put was in place. Was constructed. Wow. Rumor does have it that there was a student sit-down uh, takeover of it at one point, too. Oh, uh, wow. That sounds about right. A couple people in the audience today the nodding. Of limitations has passed on that though okay, too. So. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, the university attorney is actually here to confirm. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and historian. And historian. Okay. There you it's go. There just you go. a rumor. <laughs> She's packing handcuffs. Is she, so. uh, well, I, I do have contacts in that field. So, uh. <laughs> Professor uh, Stephen Manning is here with us today, chuckling. 
good day. Yeah. The weather, by the way, is perfect. I know you can't really see it, is. but the weather is really nice. No, it's nice. It's just <laughs> that it's almost October 1st, and I looked yep. at the the schedule, you know, for the weather, and it's going to be like 90 on Monday. I cannot believe like, yeah. you know, summer is still here. Yeah, I mean, that's so unusual for us. Our famous Michigan Indian summer. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. which usually happens in November, but this year, you know, right. September. So. Right. <laughs> I know. I just, uh, you know, I was putting out Halloween stuff today, and... Uh, Really? Sweating a lot. Really? So you were putting just, out Halloween I know. Can stuff? you believe it? I can't yeah. believe that. Such a surprise. And, uh, <laughs> it's a month away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, we got to get you got ready. a lot of stuff. I know you have a lot of stuff to put Got to leave time for grading, too. You a few know. cardboard skeletons you had hiding in the bottom of the closet, something like uh, there, that. We have a couple new skeletons <laughs> this year. You'll have to stop by to see, you know. I took the skeletons out of my vault, and, you know, uh, everybody else does the same. So. <laughs> or they came out on their they own. They came out on their own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, it was really cute. We were putting our... 12 foot skeleton up and the little girl across the street is like in the panoramic window like <laughs> <laughs> clapping Aww. really really cute so she was excited that's nice um professor heather hill from the department of english is here hello what's going on oh let's see i, I mean know. what's going on behind me is what what's I going mean. on behind yeah. you oh um people are mangling enjoying the day getting into the spirit of yes, things, I believe. Exactly. So Kids are inside big balloons. Okay. Yes, <laughs> those, those tumbly big plastic things that I would like to experience sometime myself. You well, you know, you may have that chance after we're done recording well, today. I, well, I don't know. I mean, we'll have on. to see. Come but on. I don't know how dignified that is. But <laughs> There are plenty of volunteer pushers here. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I bet. Exactly. Yes, you're right. Oh, my gosh. Well, folks, this is a program where you can send us questions regarding anything. And if you stump the panel, you win a prize. And if you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. Email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook or Instagram. Or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. We've been favored with a number of questions by Professor Stephen Manning, who loves to be on the show when the questions are used. So we're diving right in with these. Let's see what folks can do. Profs, I know you know or think you know a lot about popular culture. Whoa, that's like a dare. <laughs> this set of 10 questions is crafted to test that premise. It's actually 20 questions in that you must identify both the song and the artist of the following 10 uh -oh. in descending order, greatest single lines of rock history. Wow. At least half are pretty self-evident, e.g. the title of the song is somewhere in the lyric, but several are a bit more obscure enjoy we will definitely it's interesting it. that neither dave or beth are <laughs> yeah, here yes <laughs> the two that can answer these questions are absent today there's some good ones here though tougher than i thought can we there's use lifelines can we uh, i don't know we have a you know a, a massive hey, audience if you uh, sing it i have shazam the first lady of detroit mercy is saying <laughs> she can help us yeah. did you did you hear what dan yeah. just said oh, you have shazam. i have shazam yeah. if you all you gotta it. do is oh, sing oh. it for us man <laughs> well that's not gonna happen it's not gonna pick that up Okay, uh, number ten know. here. I, I guess again, it's like a it's like a countdown. It's like I'm it's Casey Kasem in here descending order. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, number ten is "Miss You Like the Deserts Miss the Rain." Such a great song. I love that song. I Name of the hear. song I and the performer. Hear this is one of the easy ones, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be tough. Well, we are starting the program an hour later than we normally do, so maybe we're a little tired. Do sort of like a heuristic where you're going to attempt to determine the title from the line I give you. That's a good start. It's not the testing the wind. Or or you say. No. Miss you like the deserts miss the rain. So the song title is Missing, so this is what I'm getting at here. And uh, nobody's jumping on the uh, performer, so it's a strike. Yeah. It's Everything But The Girl is the name of the band. Yeah. Everything But The Girl. Most things that I worry about never happen anyway. Oh, a couple people chuckled in the audience. <laughs> I would invite the audience to join. <laughs> I know we're not we're not putting on a very good performance here. Yeah. Sadly, um, this uh, this performer passed uh, relatively close to the start of the pandemic, and a lot of people really really broken up by this one. Classic uh, classic rocker. Not, not David Bowie, but. No, nope, no, nope, but that's you know what I believe that this rocker died within the same week as David Bowie. It was a uh, was one of those kind of weeks was for it Tom Petty. It was Tom Petty, Yay. yes, crawling back to you. Okay, I'm giving partial credit Dan. for that one. Dan, Dan, Dan. <laughs> that was a lucky guess. <laughs> Actually, I have Beth on the phone. He, re <laughs> he remembers the obituaries. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on. 
only my uh, niece were here, she'd be all over this one. Initials J.M., the performer. I wish I had a river I could skate away on. How about the title? What was it, uh, Monica? It is Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell. that's oh, right. I thought Very these well were done. rock songs. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, she's crossover. The title was River. And she's, uh, to she's back out song. performing. Right. That's she's right. A, she used to live here too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, here's a good one. This this will get us back on track. Uh, we could be heroes just for one day. That's David Bowie. That's David, David Bowie's Bowie. yeah. Heroes. That's right. That's good. Awesome. Uh, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. John Lennon said it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you remember the name of the song? Um, I think <coughs> it was John Lennon. So I'm just I'm giving it a circle right now. That's good enough. Name of the song was "Beautiful Boy." Oh yeah, darling oh, boy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, beautiful boy. This will, here's one for uh, the Gen Xers out there. Uh, here we are now. Entertain us. Oh, I'm shocked. Oh, my God. I'm just shocked. Come on, Jeff. For our generation. <laughs> I threw a, this was the gimme I threw in there. This is, the, this the is a gimme. This dun, album dun, dun. dropped. Yes, yes. That's the it. second it? week of what my senior year in high school. You're and singing that's it. pretty much it? the end of it. That's just all I Just because I, have to I say. can sing it doesn't mean I know who it is. Well, so that's, sing it, sing it, no, I'm not singing it. Sing it so they can get it. I know you know it. I know you know it. Here we are now, entertain us. us. It it's, smells uh, like from Seattle. Oh, great, great. Okay. By Nirvana. Yeah, yeah Nirvana. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Right. The leading uh, edge of the grunge movement. Ah. Ooh, apparently uh, things aren't going very well for this person. It's a town full of losers, and I'm pulling out of here to win. Just decided not to tour for the rest of the year because he's too sick. Yeah. Aerosmith, that's uh, Steven Tyler. Mm, no. No. No, but that could also be true. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen. Springsteen. Yes, yes, right. yes. He is. That's Thunder yes. Road. Just Thunder announced Road. it the right. day before yeah. yesterday. He's got What's he suffering from? Ulcer condition. Yes. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, peptic right. ulcer. Another, another uh, good one. Thanks for this one, Stephen. How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? Oh, that well, that's folk music, but <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. Dylan Jim. Blowing, in the, Blowing in the wind. Blowing in the wind. Broadly speaking, the rock era. Broadly excuse. speaking. I'm channeling my Casey Kasem for sure now. Uh, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Uh, the Beatles. Beatles. It's the Beatles for sure. Remember uh, the name of the tune. The end. Yes, good. The, the end. end. The that's end. right. Yeah, that's right. Very well done. Thanks for sitting in. <laughs> yeah, this is great. It's, we're, we're actually, you know, there's really only one that you had no idea on, let's so let's, that's pretty good. Let's get to Chuck Berry and things like that. Maybe you know, that's where I'm good at. So. <laughs> How about uh, number one was Jesus died for someone's sins, but not mine. Think of the local angle. Uh, and you'll grab this one. Patty Smith. Patty yeah. Smith. That's right. Mm. The name of the song is uh, Gloria. Who was, Gloria. Who was married to Fred Smith, too, yep. the traitor of MC5. Yep. Sonic, Sonic Smith. Yep. Kick out the jazz. Awesome. Kick yeah, out the nice. sisters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the AM version. Right, so. right. <laughs> thanks, Stephen. Yeah, those were great. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I guess. Keep us on our toes. <laughs> All right, let's go with some listener questions here. Dear professors, my sincere apologies for not checking our family's collective trivia folder on the computer and sending you a new batch of curated questions. Life gets in the way and all. All is good here, too. No wildfires to escape this year, although mm. the smoke is a little bothersome. I hear you folks in the Midwest and East Coast aren't exactly enjoying it. I hope these 25 questions serve your show well. As always, warmest greetings from Valencia, California. Valencia. It's Frank Burroughs. Thanks for sending in <laughs> Frank and the Family Burroughs. It's like a band. <laughs> Who are the... Fr- oh, my. These ones with the long lists. Uh, relatively long. Who are the first seven not ready for primetime players on Saturday Night Live? Gilda Radner, yep. Dan Aykroyd, mm-hmm. Bill, Murray, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, uh, Garrett Morris, mm-hmm. Jane Curtin. Um, Jane Curtin, yeah, and uh, Lorraine Newman. Lorraine Newman, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Keep going to oh one John, more did one you more. Say John Belushi. John, John Belushi. Belushi. John Belushi. There go. Yeah, oh, yeah, there yeah, we yeah. go. That's all seven. Very nice. Very very nice. Um, okay, who is the most translated author who wrote originally in French? Don't don't think too hard about this. He'll get there. <laughs> oh, you jinxed you it. thought too hard about it. Descartes, um, I, Moliere, <laughs> Camus, Sartre. No, it's. Uh, I would say that this is one of the early, you know, science fiction writers, right? Uh, French, French. The provost says what? Oh, yeah. I thought. Oh, I'm sorry, Monica. 
No, that's I, in Stephen French. King. Oh, no, not Stephen King. No. French, French, French. 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 Wrote in French no. and then got no. translated. Antoine de Saint Exupéry? No, I'm. I'm sort of surprised. Jacques here. Cousteau. <laughs> Jacques Cousteau. Oh, right. yeah, right. sort of give us some initials. Give know, us some right. initials. Oh, the initials will most certainly give it away. J V, and it's Jules not Verne. Justin yeah. Verlander. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Jules Verne, translated from the French. Really? Okay. French. Oh my. What did a radian docrinator supposedly do for your health in the early 20th century? Okay. A what? A radian, a radian docrinator. That's definitely uh, not something we use today for a very specific reason. Is it radioactive? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, partial credit. It was a, a quack radioactive device that supposedly did something for people or slowed something. Does that help? Aging? It slowed aging. Oh, yeah. Mm. And you wore so it around your waist. Clearly That's it didn't work. Weird. Oh, you yeah. wore it around your waist. Wait, okay. Yeah, no, no comment. To make sure you had no kids along the way. Yeah, exactly. You know, radioactive uh, to right to your abdomen there. During World War I, uh, German measles were not called German measles in the United States. What were they called? Deutsch measles. <laughs> 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 No. Um, just uh, plain measles. I mean, i got to give partial credit for that, Stephen, but that's not what it says here. It makes me think, do we remember um, the short-lived time where uh, I think the commissary at the Capitol didn't serve French fries? Do you remember that thing? Foreign yeah. freedom, measles? They were freedom measles? Freedom fries. <laughs> freedom well, fries. you say freedom measles, but it says here the answer is liberty measles. Liberty so measles. I'm just going to put it out there. And I say, did not feel liberated. That is <laughs> measles. very strange. I think that's odd. Yeah, I'm just putting that out there. That seems a little weird. Uh, jumping back and forth here. Who's the only SNL, Saturday Night Live, cast member to appear as a musical guest before he joined the cast of the show. Wow, that is incredible. And if you think about this one, uh, I'm just going to stop saying it. You should be able to actually figure it out. Musical, musical guest. I'll even give most of it away by saying when he was a musical guest, he was part of a parody band. Then he became an actor. Was on it the Adam show. Sandler? No, no. That's a good guess. Eddie Murphy? No, not Eddie Murphy. Musical parody guest. band. Uh, Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Parody band, I can think of Jack Black. Uh, I mean, you need to go a little bit further backwards. A little bit further backwards. 1984. Oh. Yes. Jeez. Oh, um, um. Oh. Initials M. -M. Steve Martin. No, not no. Steve Martin. M That's two good Martin. guesses. I Martin. Martin. Come on. Uh, M. 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 Are the initials. Yeah. Oh, M. M. I thought you said yeah. S. M. No, no, my bad. Um, Martin Mole? No. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, that's Mary. Come on, we're killing, it's gonna, you, with, it's we're gonna, killing gonna, you with good guesses. I know, it's really, really good guesses. You're going to kick yourself when you hear it. It's Michael McKean. He was on his spinal tap before he oh. came in the yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's, that's a good, uh, I like that question. That's you should have just cute. said 11. Yeah. 11. Did you, you oh, ever turn it up to yeah. 11. Oh, that was a fictitious band, didn't yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, um, I think we've had questions like this before, but I still think these are funny. <laughs> Who's older, Hall or Oates? <laughs> sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Oates. Just yeah, I think Oates has to go Oates. <laughs> <laughs> and we're cut down the middle. <laughs> no, apparently Daryl Hall was uh, born in 1946, and Oates was born in 1948. So mm. today's trivia is <clears throat> seared in your brains forever. I think you're going to get your Battle of the Bands and be on the show at the same time. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Here it comes. Here we go. No, this is Battle of the Trash. Okay. Which state capital in the United States was once named Lee's Town? L E E S T O W N. Lee's Town. State capital, Lee's Town. Mississippi. Uh, it's not Mississippi. It's not Mississippi. Virginia? It's not Virginia. It's not Topeka. Lee's it's not uh, no, Kansas, no. is it? Chicago. No. Other state. Oklahoma. I thought he was asking for the... Oh. What state capital? State. Arkansas. Not Arkansas. No. Nope. Iowa. What state capital? <laughs> that Alabama. Mean that he'd want Usually we look at the... Uh, I know. The, the map, map behind you. Behind us. I don't think Lee's Town would show up very strongly, though. No, I don't think it would. Temporary map. So that was the first name of Frankfort, Kentucky, apparently. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. So that's Lee's our... Uh, See, it's the city, not the, not, the, yes. not the state. Yes. Okay, who was the first sitcom mom 
who, who retained her job after childbirth on the show. This is tricky, and I'm not familiar. If Dave Chow were here, he'd get this in Lucy. a moment. Lucy. Lucy. That's not what it says here. What? That that makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, she did retain yeah. her job. Yeah, but I'm not sure what the criteria are you here. retained her job on the show in yeah, character? It's, it's sort of difficult to see which side of that um, we're talking about here. Yeah. No, the, Lucy is before Donna Reed. I want to been say, remember, it's mid to late 60s is actually what it says here. Wait a minute. Mid a late parody 60s. spy show? Does that help you? Oh, uh, parody spy. Barbara, Barbara Felden. Felden. On, uh, Be Get Smart. No, Get no, Smart. No. Get, Get smart. smart. Yeah, it was Agent yeah. 99 on Get Smart is what it says here. So, yeah. Wow. Interesting. I believe, looking at this, that it has to do with being on the show, like right. the job you had on yeah, the show, right? That's what so, I think, too. Yeah. I, that's kind of odd. On average, how many gallons of milk are consumed by a single American in one year. How many gallons well, I'm of sure milk? it's gone down in recent <laughs> years, but uh, hmm, 12. Uh, 80. <laughs> 40. Okay, it's somewhere between 12 and 80. I can yeah, reveal I was, that. Yeah, 45. 40. 52. Everybody gets one guess. <laughs> I said 40. Okay. I, it's All those are a little high except for the 12. Apparently it's 17. Oh. Mm. 17 seems small for some reason. We're talking about know. whole milk. We're talking about right. almond yeah. milk. Right. Exactly. We're talking about what Soy kind of milk. milk? Like what about know. things that milk is baked into? You know, uh, gallons. Gallons. Right? gallons. Gallons. 17 gallons. I mean, it's a lot of milk. It is a lot of milk. Yeah. No, not if you have cereal every day. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> um, here, here's one that I've always actually wondered about, and I'm, I guess I'm about to get my answer because the family Burroughs does their research. Uh, how many Stradivarius are actually in existence in the oh, world? How many wow. individual units? Yeah, it's so many. 59. Oh, yeah, like say five. Uh, ooh, it's way bigger than that. 300. Yeah, it's bigger than 300. Okay. Really? Really? Yeah. really? Oh, really? That's like I've only allowed one guess, so that's... What you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was... Yeah. I thought, I thought it was going to be a small little... Low. A little... Yeah, it's just yeah like, I was going to say that. I mean, really? there are eight and a half billion people in the world, so when you look at this number, suddenly it feels a little small, but it's bigger than 300. Really? 1,020. That's a little high. <laughs> okay, so say magnitude. All right. 760. So, close enough. Uh, 650. <laughs> I mean, this is really? the Kendra, you know, version of things. Well, we they were busy so in Cremona. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if we have eight and a half billion people in the world, and there's 650 Stradivarius, no. then how many people can share one? I mean, let's do the a math. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the average price? This would be more interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. You could... Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, you hear behind us the, the Battle of the Bands that's happening during our uh, homecoming event here. And uh, again, everybody else but me can see what's going on. It's really amazing. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It is cool, actually. It's like, uh, it reminds me of being in New Orleans at a second line or something like that. Professors, during World War II, what was the first item to be formally rationed by the U.S. government? Sugar? It's not what it says here. It's a material, not a oh, it's metal. Material. Steel. Doesn't say steel. Copper. Rubber. Doesn't say copper. It said it was rubber. Rubber. It said it was rubber. tires. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. What is? Oh my. Uh, it's one of those <laughs> weird things where you have a word that's the collective uh, um, a word for you know a number of animals. Uh, apparently, a gathering of pug dogs is called something. My sister-in-law would definitely know this. Pugalicious. <laughs> Pugalicious is Pugs, partial uh, credit in that. A brood. Uh, okay. I mean, that's you know that sounds uh, good. Probably <laughs> yappers because that's a what nest. You probably would get. It's a nest of pugs. Pug. Uh, how about I give you one clue and then we go from there? So okay. pugs sort of have that like permanent kind of wrinkly sour face. Mm -hmm. So think about what collective a wrinkle? noun. A, a wrinkle is pretty oh, close. Uh, it's pretty close. They're called a grumble. I mean, grumble. that makes sense. Grumble. But I mean, a who uses these A grumble of nouns? pugs. A grumble of pugs, you know? Yeah, exactly. In ancient England, the British were known to have gauged in flighting. What is flighting? I'm looking over at Heather. I know one, you like are, and I hate it. Um, yeah, 100%. <laughs> you said Can you spell it, England? please? In ancient England, yes, yeah, it's flighting. So F L Y T I N G, flighting. Flighting. What would you be doing in ancient England? It has a analogy to things we do in the modern era, mostly in the area of modern hip hop. Does that help? 
Line dancing. Well, not line dancing. dancing. No. Square dancing. Music. Hip hop. Something to do with something to do of with music. music. Is there yep. an instrument? Is it instrument? Really? There's no um, there's no instrument involved in flighting, but I think that it got involved in uh, whistling. 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 No. Whistling. no. Singing. What's it got to do with hip hop? <laughs> Choral singing. So. Um, Okay, last shot. Uh, have you seen the movie Eight Mile? Yeah. Is there yeah. any red blood in Detroit or not seen the movie? So it's rap battling. It's like insulting oh. someone back and forth to oh. see who wins. Oh. Is what it says. Yeah. I don't exactly. understand so how hip hop is supposed to help us. A new word. Like. Well, you know, it, I'm it's still kidding. done in you, the, in you, the you, modern you, era, you basically. Can, you can go ahead. One upmanship. Yes. Or, oh, 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 there you go. One upmanship. That, that with, sounds with, good. With insults. Insults. Collectively, what are Coronet, Caprice Green, White Cloud, Seventh Generation? Detergents? I don't even, I mean, detergents, you're in the wheelhouse, is all I can say. In the wheelhouse. Uh, are they scents? They are toilet not. tissue. They are toilet tissue brands. Uh, yes, that is correct. Frig- Jim just had to go a little deeper into the... <laughs> Into, into his closet, into his uh, bathroom closet. Exactly. <laughs> but you, you immediately recognized it as like some sort of branding uh, sort of thing, right? So that's kind of cool. Thanks. Okay, let's see. Uh, what is the name? Oh, wow, this is great. I've never heard this before. So the Werner's gnome had a name. The company gave him a name, but then they had a contest called Gname the Gnome, <laughs> and someone had a different idea of what to name. He said, we will accept either the original name or the chosen name for the Verner's Gnome. The Verner's Gnome. Mm-hmm. The little guy with the beard? Yeah. Because yeah. Verner's is deliciously different. Any ideas? I am not a Detroiter, so <laughs> I was not really Patio Verner. <laughs> I've been here longer than Vincent. Vincent. Yeah, I am, yeah. Vincent. You know Pam? Vincent. Oh, I thought you were raising your Victor. hand. Vincent. Vincent. So Woody is what the company had nicknamed him because Werner's was aged four years in in wood barrels. That's the uh, tradition. And then the F-O-U-R became F-O-R, and you never knew how many years it was aged. And then they had the Gnome the Gnome game, and they decided to name him Jerome. Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome the Gnome? I mean, oh, I don't know. Oh, Jerome can because it questions. rhymes. Yes, it does rhyme. It oh. does. Uh, what uh, do Weird Al Yankovic, Emily Harris, Ben Stein, Jodie Foster, and Bette Midler all have in common? Birthdays. Birthdays. It's not birthdays this time. They all went that to Yale. Guess. They all went to Yale. It has something to do with school, but school they of drama. Go to Yale. They did not go to drama school. Nope. Was the same high school? Uh, high school is getting a little bit closer. Were they all valedictorian. They were all valedictorian. Oh, really? That's right. Really? Yes, uh-huh. you got it, Heather. Very well done. Emmy Lou Harris, huh? I never would have guessed. What Canadian province has towns named Riga, Copenhagen, Hamburg, and London? Well, that's Ontario. Uh, Ontario. Ontario. I mean, it, that's not what it says here, but there is a London, Ontario, right? Oh. So, um, what, are the, what are the other ones? Riga, Copenhagen, and Hamburg. I'm guessing named after all the European cities of So, Ontario. Newfoundland, Labrador, yeah. Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, Quebec. Alberta. Island. It's Alberta. <laughs> Alberta. Just, all right, I have to run all down all the uh, PEI. No, no. Would Dave have known that? That's a good Dave question. Have Dave would have known, 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 yep. known it. Medicine Hat was not on the list, but uh, yeah. Which came out first, the iconic Farrah Fawcett swimsuit poster or the TV show Charlie's Angels? The poster. The poster came out first by six months. Did it's it. kind of interesting. And it is iconic, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, this is pretty good, too. <laughs> and pretty good drumming as well. Collectively, what are Celeron, Elba, Humbug, Mama Judah, and Sturgeon? This is good. I like this. Could you repeat that? Celeron, Elba, Humbug, Mama Judah, and Sturgeon. They are all the same thing. What is it? Sturgeon's a Mama fish. Judah. It sounds like they're fish. They are not fish, but it has something to do with water. Humbug. Algae? No, that's a good guess. Algae is a good good guess. guess. Yeah. Uh They're relatively close to where we are right now, these things. Are they boats? They're not boats. Uh, Bridges? What was that, Pam? 
They're not beaches, but you're getting closer. Bodies of water? They're not bodies of water. I protest Bays. these clues. Yeah, there are things the in bodies of water. Bays? Islands? Like Boats? They're islands on the Detroit River. Yeah, that's what oh, they are. Okay. Wait, They're repeat that list again. On, yeah. Elba, Celeron, Humbug, Mama Judah, and Sturgeon. They're Humbug. Wow, okay. On the Detroit River, yeah. Are, are these islands inhabited? Jeez. I don't think so. Oh. I think some well, of them are actually quite small as okay. well. So. All right. Mm. That's okay. What famous music- musician comedian was born Maria Rosario Pilar Martinez Molina Paeza? Rosie Perez? Mm-mm. Good guess. Musician comedian? You have to go one generation back to oh. I think you'll get there. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> what famous musician or comedian, both, was born Maria Rosario Pilar Martinez Molina Baeza? So who was a female comedian who played music? Yep, that's exactly right. And she went by female. one name, which made it oh, a lot Charo. easier. It's Charo. Charo, <laughs> yeah. Okay, geez. That's exactly right. Oh. Comedian? I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, okay. I, yeah, I think you know, I, yeah, I think it is. Oh, yes. my. Oh, which is larger in square mileage? Belle Isle or the great city of Hamtramck? Belle Isle, I would think. Yeah, I would say Belle Isle. Belle Isle yeah. One of these is 1.5 square miles. The other is just over two square miles. I'll say Hamtramck just to be different. It is. It's Hamtramck. It's bigger than Belle Isle. That's pretty interesting. I have to look at it on the. We'll have to confirm it when we see the uh, U.S. map later, right? It's a beautiful day <laughs> yeah, out be there. A big help. <laughs> hey, Matt, it's a beautiful day out there behind it, that's you. That's what I hear. Yeah. That's what I hear. yeah. <laughs> and how are the bands doing? Great. <laughs> Which premiered on television first, professors, the Munsters or the Adams Family? Adams Family. Adams Family. The Adams Family. Okay. By how much? A year, I think. Yeah, I think so. The Munsters was a takeoff on the Adams Family. Right, right. It says here that they premiered six days apart in the fall of really? 1964. Wow. With the Adams Family first. Huh. The six days. <laughs> Feels like maybe something was going through the writer's room. It was the same. Uh huh. Yeah. A little bit of a leak. The actor uh, graduated from, uh, UC Berkeley in 1973 with a philosophy degree. He was also the first male spokesman for the Jenny Craig weight loss system and uh, was nicknamed the happy boy in Japan. Who is he? If Dave Chow were here, we'd yeah, know this in two seconds. Simmons, I mean. hmm. A famous TV kid. From the 60s. Oh, is it Mikey? Not Mikey. From oh, the 60s. Ooh. So that was earlier. He's then. called Happy Boy in Japan. That would be the name of the show, where the title of the show had the name of the character that he portrayed. I know that Dave would get this in like five seconds. If Dave is listening, he's like tearing yeah. his eyeballs out. Well, Dave's not here, so. Yeah, I know, I know. That's <laughs> Jerry Mathers. That was Leave it oh, to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. Oh, wow. yes. uh, I didn't never class. pictured him as happy. Is he is he a happy kid? Well, I believe that the the show didn't translate, so they just retitled it oh, Happy Boy. Okay. Right. So. okay, here we go. This is pretty good too. I gosh, Dave, where are you? Collectively, what are <laughs> Optra, Epica, Orlando, Tornado? Not tornado, tornado. What was the first part of that again? Optra, Epica, Orlando, and Tornado. What are they collectively? Car names? <laughs> they are car names. Oh, right. But they are Chevys that are only sold in the country of Canada. Uh-huh. That is a pretty cool set of oh. interesting Tornado? Things. Thank Tornado. you, Burroughs family. Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, thanks for sending us those. Those were great. Yeah. Those were very good. Okay, let's see if we can uh, um, reboot here a little bit. I feel like uh, now that the bass drum is quieted down a little bit, we can uh, oh, well, we'll get, another one. get our energetic... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Druthers back here. Dear panelists, being a pet person and entertainment buff, I've attached a series of 12 questions on TV show pets. I hope the group will find them challenging. <laughs> Good luck. Julie Elder from Poughkeepsie, New York. Thanks for sending us your questions always, Julie. That's great. What were the names of the Dobermans on Magnum P.I.? Oh, Zeus, yeah. Zeus and Apollo. Zeus and Apollo. You really. knew that off the top of your head. Really. So wait, when they rebooted a couple years ago, are the dogs back? Yes. That's my question. Yes, I haven't are. seen them. For the real? Yes, oh my I, I don't watch Do the new one. What kind of dogs are they, though? Dobermans. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. The same names, too. 
that that's, that's that's what he just I asked. Love, oh, <laughs> really? I love I love that you knew that off the top of your head, Heather. That's cool. What was the name of the bear that played Ben on Grizzly Adams? Oh it, my god. In oh my. real life or in the I, show? Yeah, I, I just I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. Ben. Yeah, so there was a bear on Grizzly Adams mm-hmm. named Ben, but that bear had a name of it was course. a different name, right? Mm. So and he was yeah. a pet bear? Apparently, uh, I yeah. The just fact that he had two names is usually <laughs> yeah. given yes. one name. Yes. Is uh, shares the same name with a very very famous kids clown show from back in the day. Howdy Doody. Howdy Doody. <laughs> Bozo. No. Boo Boo. Bozo. 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 Oh, that's a bear. terrible thing to name a bear. Right? Yeah, it is. Oh, poor, oh, poor. I don't think the bear minded. <laughs> yeah. As long as he was well fed. Yeah, I'm driving right. to campus today, and uh, the NPR article was. Bears that become acclimated or too acclimated to humans are more likely to attack humans. <laughs> and so then I'm reading this question and going, Bozo, no. Like, get away from yeah. everybody. <laughs> Back uh, off, Bozo. <laughs> mo- most folks, you know, who uh, are uh, in early part of Gen X know that what <coughs> breed of dog Scooby-Doo was. What was he? Oh, he was a big Dane. dog. Right? Great Dane? He was a Great Dane, oh, great Dane. yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you can even say a cartoon is a Great Dane, I, I don't know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. He's referred to as a Great Dane in the show, exactly. On the TV show Frasier, Eddie was afraid of only one character. Who was that? Uh, it's a cute little joke that calls back to Cheers, if you remember the original, before the spinoff. Hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, L- uh, Lilith? It was Lilith, yeah. yeah. Oh, Fraser's oh, ex-wife, yeah. Lilith. Yeah. That's Good. exactly right. Well, who wouldn't be, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. Let's see. Bamboo Harvester played this iconic TV animal. Don't think too hard. Who was it? Bamboo A TV harvester. animal whose name was Bamboo Harvester, and the whole shtick was that he could talk. Oh, the talking mule. No, Francis the talking no. No, no. The, no. there was a horse. But, uh, Wait a minute. The whole shtick was that he could talk. That, that he could talk. Is that actually that Mr. Ed? The it's horse? Mr. Oh, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed's yeah. yeah. name was Bamboo, Bamboo Harvester. Harvester. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a I mean, it's memorable. That's a horse maybe, name. Maybe he had a racing career and we just didn't, uh, you know, <laughs> Mr. Ed. get the full story. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's obvious, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. What was the name of the Adams Family cat? We have a nice little crossover between the questions. Uh, I never watched the show. Yeah, I don't. Uh, FYI, it was not a cat. It was a full-grown male lion, and it had a very cutesy name. Oh, that's oh, (laughs) cupcake. I mean, you're getting there. You're getting there. Fluffy. Somebody, did you say fluffy? Yes. Fluffy. Kitty. It was kid, Kitty Cat, basically, was the name of the uh, full-grown lion. Yes, and I believe it was just. uh, like a loop on some like side footage uh, and they would open the door and it would just roar you know and then they'd close it it's really throw some food in there exactly and, yeah nice little shtick there or a guest you know? <laughs> or a guest <laughs> right yeah Ooh, miami vice what was the name of sunny crockett's pet crocodile oh, oh that's a great question yes it is yes well, Heather, I'm surprised you Jaws. don't know this, too. <laughs> yeah, no I mean, idea. Jaws is good. Uh, it's a little more pop culture than Jaws, as uh, weird as that Elvis. sounds. Elvis. Elvis was the name that of the crocodile. Really? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Heather is on a tear. I don't Just know how are never going to live this down. Oh I, I don't know how I pulled that out. Oh, I really that's don't. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, for all of you WKRP and Cincinnati fans, what, would the, what was the name of Les Nessman's unseen dog? Never actually saw it on the show. Oh. Had a, a uh, adult human male name. It wasn't like, you know. Fred. It makes sense when you hear it. That's all I can say. Les uh, Les Nessman. Fred. It's just, it's, I, I don't want to make fun of people named Fred, but it's just kind of a plain yeah, name, right. you know. Yeah. It says here so Phil. So we've just offended all the friends. His Phil. dog was Phil. Phil? <laughs> oh, Phil. Just, you know, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. For all those uh, Gen X cartoon uh, people like myself, what was the name of Gargamel's cat on the Smurfs? Whoa. Shares a name with a prominent demon in Christian mythology. <laughs> Methuselah? Yeah. Nope. Mistopheles? Yeah. Beelzebub? No, it starts with the letter A. If I give away any other letters, you don't know this. No one grew, no. besides me. I didn't up watch the show. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah. Asriel was his name. Oh, Asriel. Asriel. I wouldn't know that. Which is kind of a cute name. Not familiar with that demon. Yeah. <laughs> How many individual piglets played Green Acres Arnold Ziffel during the entire run of the show? 
This was written for Dave Chow. It would have to be like eight. I, I mean, I feel like I have to give it to you. It's six, sure. Okay. Like, you know, poor. Because it went on for a while, it and it piglets don't on. remain piglets for too long. That is true. Sooner or later, it's uh, Sunday morning breakfast. What can I say? Or ungainly hog. Uh, yes, ungainly <laughs> hog, which is not a, a, a cute name to name your uh, your pet pig. Thanks, Julie, for sending those in. Yeah, those were yeah, really great. Those are great. Yeah. We'll move on to another uh, set sent in by a listener here. Dear Matt and professors, I've been slacking in my duty, sending questions of late. So here's my latest contribution. Again, thanks for an enjoyable and educational half hour every week. As always, regards in Viva Las Vegas, Michelle Horner. Thanks for sending those in, Michelle. We haven't heard from you in a while, and we're always happy to. Who was Johnny Carson's first guest during his stint on The Tonight Show? Oh, wow. wow. Joan Never. Rivers. No, his very, very first guess would have been... It's not Bette Biller, is it? A Back very in the 60s. old golden ager. Oh. That's the best uh, a very uh, tip old I can give you. Uh, so ager. someone who is the Johnny Carson of his time, kind of on his way out. Was it Jack, Jack Parr? Parr? No, it wasn't Jack okay. Parr. It was a sort of a vaudeville-level pan entertainer. Sid Caesar? Sid Caesar, getting closer, getting closer. Yeah, uh, no. Hmm. Did, uh... No ideas on this no. one, huh? I mean, the initials, initial stage initials, GM, almost gives it away. If I tell you he um, had a mustache on the show, but Groucho Marx. Yeah, 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 it yeah, was absolutely. Groucho Marx. So, so going back to Bette Midler, I, I, I was kind of off. She was his <laughs> but, last guest. But she was the last guest. But I thought she was chosen to be the last guest for a reason. Oh. Because he, she had some significance in her his earlier shows. Oh, I don't remember that. But... I guess I didn't know when this show started. I think okay. she was one of his favorite guests. Maybe that's yeah. his question. But I know she was the last guest. And she sang to him. <laughs> okay. And he wouldn't have invited Joan Rivers because they no, had quite they the falling out. Falling out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Under which U.S. president's term was OSHA created? OSHA. Think of the, le yeah, think of the least obvious choice. It's Nixon. Nixon yeah. And then you'll, uh, you'll get there. So uh, Richard Nixon's career. Who is the famous director that has had his hand in such epic TV shows as The Fugitive, The Banana Splits, Gilligan's Island, and movies like The Omen, Lethal Weapon, and Goonies? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. come on. Initials RD, like laid everything out in the 70s and the 80s. Fantastic director. RD. I brought up Goonies last time. Everybody laughed. Child of the RD? 80s. Who RD. did The Omen? Who did the omen? That's exactly what I'm asking you. Richard, Robert. Robert. Richard? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> partial credit, partial credit. <laughs> Richard. It was Richard Donner. Donner. Richard Donner. Richard Donner. Wow. I'm really surprised that you didn't know that one off the top of your head somehow. Okay, what is the most common shielding gas when it comes to arc welding. I mean, I expect you all to be able to know this one. Acetylene. Riff on it. It's not acetylene. So acetylene is the fuel gas. What we need is right. a non-reactive gas. Xenon. Xenon. <laughs> I mean, that's as good a guess as any. That's one of the noble gases. The answer is one of the noble gases, but it's not xenon. Argon? It's argon. argon. Yeah, mm -hmm. argon. Very Said well the chemist. Done. Well, you know, we don't have Mara here today, so <laughs> someone's got to fill in the gaps here. Yeah, okay. Let's see. How many songs by Alvin and the Chipmunks <laughs> hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100? Uh, one. one. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. Four. Too one. many. I like that. I mean, you're all in the wheelhouse. I will tell you, it's pretty brutal. It's two. The mm. really obvious one is the, the Christmas, Christmas song. Christmas. Yeah. Yes, the Christmas Alvin. song, also known as the Chipmunk song yep. in that case. Alvin. What is the other one? FYI, they only provided backup vocals. A little culturally insensitive. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised. Vocals. The smells like teen spirits. So you remember <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, not. I, heard, I actually yeah. heard this song the other day. Too, and I can't so you remember it. it was Dave Seville, right? He was doing all the voices, <laughs> and he was right. just screwing around with the tape deck and speeding them up and slowing them down and doing... But the first thing he did before he invented the idea of the Chipmunks was the Witch Doctor song. So they were playing. Oh yes. Ooh, oh, e, yes. Ooh, ah, ah, bing oh, bang. Oh yeah. Oh, bing bang. You oh, know. Oh, so. oh, well, bing bang. I try. I thought that culturally insensitive would tip the scale there, but uh, oh well. Where do you find 
Haligonians. What do you find? Haligonians. Well, in Haligonia. I, that makes perfect sense. Doesn't it? Unfortunately, that's it's not what incorrect. it says. It's <laughs> incorrect. Not close. Uh, okay. Is this a real place? Or? So for the record, it's what um, the denizens of a certain city call themselves. Haligonians. Uh, you take the first part of the word, you might get there. Hela Greece? It's Halifax. It's oh, people Halifax. who live in Halifax. Oh, call oh. oh. oh you said Haligonians. Hela. I heard Hela. Oh, Hela. I was like, Haligonians. Yes. Well, what We've got no room to talk Halifax. Michiganders. <laughs> Michiganders, you know, Detroiters. Okay. Yes. I've heard Michiganians, but it's a little on the rare side, you know. Michiganians. Okay, what Hollywood comedy duo's last film was titled Hollywood or Bust? Oh, uh, Lewis, Lewis, and Lewis and Martin. Oh. Lewis and Martin. Yeah, it was. That was a, a that one came pretty fast to people. Uh, what was unique about Tyler Fillmore and Arthur's presidential terms? This is a nice piece of trivia. I've heard this one before. Tyler. Again, Tyler Fillmore and Chester oh, A. They Arthur. They became president for, for, as vice president. They became president as vice president After assassination. And as a result of that, yeah. Assassin something very death special of the happened. president. What? As a result of the death of the president and them becoming president, something else happened. They, they only served one term. Uh, that is also true, but that's not what it says here. Hmm. This is kind of cool. During the majority of their terms, they didn't have something. A vice president. A vice, a vice president. president. Oh, yes. Okay. During the majority of their terms, they did not have a vice president. That was true of we'll Truman also it, you know, for his first take term. Take it down the road. You know. <laughs> we'll find somebody to do it. So, so how does that work? That's a good question. Do you get to select, or does that have to be voted on by Approved by the Congress? Senate? Probably Senate. approved by the Senate, I would think. I would think so, yeah. yeah. And it didn't happen until the 1960s yeah. when we changed the oh, Constitution to allow the Constitution. it. Constitution, that's right. So mm -hmm. Nixon was the first person to get to nominate a vice president to the Senate after after so, uh, uh, Spiro Agnew, Agnew retired uh, mm -hmm. resigned retired. to retire <laughs> <laughs> right William yeah. Miley yeah <laughs> uh, to switch gears but only a little there were three films in the Cannonball Run series <laughs> Cannonball Run Cannonball Run 2 and of course Speed Zone I'm sure they write all the professors have watched these profusely in the last 24 hours oh, but yeah. Who was the only actor who appeared in all three of the films? Oh, wow. Burt Reynolds. Burt Dom Reynolds. DeLuise. It doesn't say Burt Reynolds no? here. I, I, that would have been my guess. Was but it the Crazy Doctor? Uh, crazy Doctor is not one of the choices here. So, That's uh, Allie Fields. It depends. Uh, I'm thinking uh, there's a MASH connection, if that helps anybody. Jamie Farr. Jamie Farr. It's Jamie Farr. Yeah. He was the, oh, really? was he the, the Sheik. Crazy Doctor? No, he was the Sheik. Okay. All right. Or whatever his title was. Okay. I, I have not seen Speed Zone. I'm just I haven't even. I didn't even know there was a third one. Yeah, they should. I can't, I'm surprised they didn't give up after the second. <laughs> <laughs> after the first. Oh, the first one was great. <laughs> the first one is. It was kind of like a Love Boat, course. where they invite all the retired actors, actresses <laughs> right. to come on right. and just do something stupid. Do something stupid. So, exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, collectively, who are Hidra, Orga, Gigan, and Bioante? Are those monsters from Godzilla? They are exactly monsters from Godzilla. Dan, wow. Dan, yeah. Dan. Foes Dave would Godzilla. have gotten that one for sure. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Dave would have gotten that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You were channeling him. I was channeling Dave. Let's see. In what city was Jeff Bezos born? Is that, is that really a piece of trivia? I'm like, I don't know. I... Was he really born or was he, <laughs> was he, was he delivered? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Dropped from space. I, and I thought Seattle. But um, there's, a, there's a Breaking Bad connection if you can go there. If you know Albuquerque? Aaron, Albuquerque, Albuquerque is where he was born, hmm. yeah, for, for whatever that means, you know. Okay, when did the streetcars on the Brooklyn Bridge stop running? That's a good piece of trivia. 1940. Uh, you know, it was a little bit later, but you're really close. 45. It says 1950. You know, oh, a little okay. crossover from that post six war. years before ours stopped. There you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. There you go. Oh, my. One of these kind of questions always comes up here. How many Taco Bells are currently open in the country of Mexico? I just, who writes these questions? I, 
I don't know. Oh, Lord. <laughs> in, in the, minus five. Yeah. In the entire Probably country. Probably one. In the entire country of Mexico, how many Taco Bells are currently open? Mm. Now, 78. Let's Let's think of where they would be. Where there are a lot of American tourists to go to them. I don't know. S- who yeah. said that somebody Tijuana, guessed? Maybe. Tijuana. I'll yeah. say 110. <laughs> Why is I'd this say so I'd say zero. It, I'd say zero. It is. It's, it's zero. zero. Oh, it's excellent. Excellent. However, however, Taco Bell, multiple times <laughs> since its founding, has attempted to penetrate i'm sure and uh the bottom line is low sales closed the last one in 2010 so yeah in, in mexico in mexico oh, okay yes, yeah in mexico. it that's, makes sense right it's actually I mean, a, let's well that's serious. like i'm thinking cancun is probably the only place you would <laughs> get any sales yeah or i'm, I'm the thinking olive garden in italy exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> so the, the first thing i thought of dan was this wonderful uh TikTok channel like, why where would you it's do these that? two young italian guys yeah and all they do is watch people cook italian food and claw at their faces like a no <laughs> like it's a people well, do everything wrong <laughs> and the whole thing is a reaction channel of them being like don't break the pasta <laughs> it's really there, entertaining there's also a he's a uh a canadian a comedian from Toronto, and he's probably uh, from China. I think he's Chinese, um, but he's a uh, he uh, critiques uh, cooking shows. Oh, Uncle yes. Roger. Uncle Roger. He, he, very amusing. very funny. Very and, amusing. Uh, uh, he may be a little culturally inappropriate. His he, but he doesn't but, hold back. But He'll he doesn't hold back, and he doesn't like Jamie do right. Oliver, unfortunately. Yeah. So, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Carl Sagan got his BA, BS, MS, and PhD from only one university. Oxford? Wasn't Oxford. Princeton. Nope. It's Midwestern. Midwestern. University of Chicago. University of Chicago, oh. yeah, very good. That makes sense. You want to stay in one place for a really long time? You know? Well, that's a fairly prestigious place I to stay. I would say so. Yeah. Oh, yep. Matt, More Nobel laureates than any university. Matt, there's a really cute puppy behind you. Oh. So he has, so he looks. <laughs> well, I want to see the puppy. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Back to hosting the show. Okay. How long did the world's longest plane hijacking last? I don't know if I want to know the answer to this oh one. Oh my gosh! Ay, ay, oh, ay. was it that 727 that sat on a tarmac for what uh, five days, seven days? It says 1988, Kuwait Airlines Flight 422 had 112 occupants and two fatalities before everything came apart. But it was a little bit longer than eight days. Oh, man. I think it was mm-hmm. 21 days. Two or weeks. They were negotiating yeah. I mean, it was between time. the two responses I just heard, 16 days mm-hmm. on the plane. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't flying for 16 days, but like you said, on it the It was tarmac. sitting on a tarmac somewhere. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Can you name two out of the five largest cities in the great Commonwealth of Kentucky? Lexington. Lexington and Louisville. Louisville. And, Louisville. and Louisville, yes. L-L. I also have Paducah. Bowling Green. Is Paducah Owensboro Kentucky? and Covington. Covington. Were the other three choices, yes. Okay, sure. Uh, who? What are the two most popular cheeses in America? <laughs> I will, not in any order, save you from American is not one of the top two Swiss cheeses. Swiss and cheddar. cheddar. Cheddar is one of them. Yeah, nice English cheese. Swiss. Yes. Provolone. That's Swiss? Mozzarella? Mozzarella is what really? it has here, yeah. yeah. So one Italian, one English uh, cheese. Well, just well, yeah, because of the amount of pizza yeah. consumed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 1960, Lawrence Welk had the number one song in America, and it stayed there for two weeks. What was it? Tiny Bubbles. It's not what it says no, here. No, that was Don Ho. Yeah. <laughs> That was the only number one song he had, by the way. If you could name the song, that would be great. Uh, did you give the oh, year? One, and the two. 1960. 1960. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, old name for a very major city in um, the country of India. Mumbai, Delhi. Uh, Getting there. Uh, Smudge my glasses. No idea. I have no idea. I'm surprised. Surprise. You said that a lot on this. Yeah, I did. Oh. I did. I really did. <laughs> Calcutta was the name of the song. Oh, okay. uh, I, I could sort I don't of think I've ever heard that head. song. Yeah, I don't but uh, that song. anyway. You know what? It's time to go back to the Family Burroughs uh, list of Ask the Professor Imponderables. We have just enough time to ponder this question. Everybody on the panel has to give us uh, an interesting answer to the question. What's your favorite 
elementary school memory. Ooh. Does that help you, Dan? Dan was just talking about staying in touch with the folks he went to grade yeah. school with. Can you think of one? Can you think? You're of assuming one? we had one. Well, I, I you know, uh, some some of the other favorites you may not have favorites of. I figured everybody went to elementary school. I think. Hmm. Pretty sure. I skipped it and went right to college. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, makes sense now that you became a professor. Read, can read, read the read the question again. I want to make sure just, I understand. You them. know, this is one of our imponderables, so we're supposed to fill in the blank for the family burrows, Frank and the family burrows. What's your favorite elementary school memory? Favorite. Yeah. Favorite so it's all about favorites. No, no one's jumping on this one, Frank. I'm hmm. so sorry. I'm trying to think of like even how I would answer the question. Yeah. My favorite grade school memory? Do I have? Oh, one? I, 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 I. I remember one. Okay, go for it. Can I? May I? Of course. I, I'm kidding, of yeah. course. I'm. Um, I got to star in the Christmas play. Oh, well, where were you? Um, I was some sort of princess. Oh, well, that makes perfect and sense. I, I got Excellent. To, to, yeah, so. <laughs> Very, that's kind of cool. I, I remember I like this that. yellow dress and like yeah. all of the sparkles mm -hmm. and stuff, so. I did not know that. Yeah, well, I had forgotten about it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity there to remember that. To remember that. I wish yep. I had known that. Yep. Uh, All right, I, I have one, but not to brag or anything. But so <laughs> in fourth grade, I was in Mrs. Meal's class. We were learning addition, uh, uh, division and multiplication. So my mother stayed up with me <coughs> and showed me cards of multiplication and division. So the, it was a kind of a competition in the class. So she would show a card, and then if you got it wrong, you would step down. So I think she got to me, and I went through the whole deck. Wow. At the end, and I was the last one. Mm, nice. And so, nice. Uh, that's but nice. that's so. Now that I think about it, that's probably a good memory. Yeah, yeah. future so mathematician was born. Yeah. Oh, and my mother gets some credit too, because <laughs> she helped me out. So. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but I also went to a, a Catholic school, so I have great nun stories. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. Great as in good. I mean, um, I have I don't know nun stories good, too. So. <laughs> Sister Bernard falling asleep in class a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, I had the opposite. I had Miss McDonald in the sixth grade who was teaching us world history. And um, she, had, she had examples of pretty much everything. And when we were talking about prehistoric people, she was suggesting a dance they might have done, which is basically a duck walk. And she, she decided to demonstrate for us. <laughs> this was a spinster lady who had taught school for okay. 40 years, maybe. So that was kind of interesting I to sixth graders. So. Yeah, I bet it was. It stuck out in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm trying to put my finger on one. I, I'm kind of going in, in Heather's direction. I, I remember, uh, I'm shocking, right? It's a Halloween-related uh, uh, memory. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. Uh, How would we ever think of that? Third grade, uh, you know, Miss Nagel, she, she allowed me to, like, orchestrate the decoration of the classroom for Halloween because she saw that I was really into it, and that sticks And out. the rest is history. And the rest is history. Wow, wow. it goes back that far. Wow. I was almost born on Halloween. I mean, come on. <laughs> 1982, I go way back. So when did it become your favorite holiday? I mean, just because of the way my mom always said, well, you were supposed to be born on Halloween. Oh, okay. So, you know, one year old, basically. All right. Other grade school memories. So <laughs> mine mine was sports. I mean, just, sports is good. That's sports, good. yes. Yeah. No, I was like the, what, Tom? I, I was the captain of the football team. Nice. Macklin, Hart, and Mary, and uh, cool. we, we went undefeated and. Wow! Yeah, that was a good. That was yeah, a good. Yeah, that's movie. a good season, right? Spin there. the bottle would be second. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a memories, Colleen. But that's a different story. So. This is elementary <laughs> school. You understand? Uh, yeah, I do realize that. Yes, uh, an early bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. Jeff, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, no, I'm thinking. Cogitating. What, what comes to mind is um, second grade and did a book report and oh. as part of the book report I dressed up as Spot the dog complete oh. with tail and ears and oh, the whole nine my mom cool. <laughs> you know, made up a, a costume and somewhere in my parents basement they probably still have a photo me holding the book dressed up in the costume I love it I love That's it great. I bet there is a photo of that out there somewhere 
Jeez. My wife, who's in the audience, better not ever find it. But that's yeah. <laughs> no, 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 she if she can. does, she'll let us know. She'll find it. She'll put it on Facebook. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I huh. think uh, Stephen is the only one I'm, we have. I'm having from. a hard time coming up with. It's tough. Uh, that's why it's I asked tough. you to, to read the question again, so I understood. Uh, I can come up with two. I'll only tell one. I was uh, when I was allowed, maybe as a fourth grader or fifth grader, to stop clarinet lessons. That was a good day for me. My, 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 my father, I, my father, my parents were, were were great big band people, you know, Benny Goodman uh -huh, and Al Hurt and that stuff. And I think my father, he was careful with money, to put it mildly. I think he had this vision that I would learn how to play the clarinet and that I would go to college and, and you know, work my way through college so we wouldn't have to pay for it. Tur <laughs> turns out he never paid for it anyway. Oh, but they, so he made me take uh, clarinet lessons and I had a, they got a clarinet. I had a horrible teacher that would rap my knuckles whenever I missed a note. Oh, I could never get, and so I would intentionally, you know, you can easily make a clarinet squawk. So they'd make me practice. I'd yes. go up in my room and I'd squawk. And I squawked so much, they finally said, okay, you can right, stop taking it. clarinet, probably <laughs> fifth grade or something. And this is, this is a positive memory for you. This is a positive memory, school. yes. Well, it's a big yes. deal. Sorry. It's quitting yeah. clarinet. Sorry, that's all I got. <laughs> yes. Positive memory. <laughs> well, now that I see Tommy Titan coming on the scene, I know that that's all the time we have for today. So I'd like our professors, one at a time, to say goodbye. Heather. Bye-bye. Stephen. Bye-bye. Enjoy the lovely weather when you... <laughs> Tom. Goodbye and thank you. <laughs> Dan. Thank you. Jeff. Good day. Jim. Farewell. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. As the professor is transcribed at the facilities of the Fountain Lounge in the Student Union Building, but through the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. As the professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>